Jim, it's a point tonight, two two draw at home to Tranmere. Just give us your thoughts overall on the game if you can. Um pleased with a point. Um pleased to come back from behind again. Two goals behind tonight. Um in what I feel was real adversity. Uh the nature of the first goal, just to start with, um, when I watched it live, I thought it seemed really bizarre. I didn't know how it had gone in. It was, it was strange to me. I, I thought at first Richard Donald had took a bad touch. I knew the ball was travelling outside the line of the goal when it was passed back to him. I thought he took a bad touch off the outside of his foot. Um, only when I got into the changing room did he tell me, and the, and the rest of the players tell me that Rich never even took a touch. It, it actually hit the rugby. The rugby um, post holder in the ground. There's a little, there's a little rubber lip that sticks up slightly above the ground. And um, Rich told me, and the player told me that it deviates off that rubber on its way back to him and goes into the net. Which, I mean, if you'd have seen my expression on that pitch side when that goal went in, I was, I was puzzled by it. I was confused. It didn't seem right in the moment. And then uh, upon learning that, um, he shouldn't laugh, but. I almost had to laugh because I thought, how else can we be tested in this in, in this spell? You know, we're, we're bottom of the football league, um, facing real adversity. How else could, can we be tested? And that was almost my message to the players um, because I thought it was it was really hostile tonight. It was difficult for the players to play. Um, when we went one 0 down, um, the ground was very agitated, um, but the players kept trying to do it in, in a way that we think um, is the best way for us or in a way that can work and we then we then faced another decision that, that we thought was incorrect um, we've seen that one back Jimmy K clearly pokes the ball away from the lad the, the ref apologises to me at the end of the game when I, I think he feels the gravity of the decision that he's made is, is probably an incorrect one there was no there was no argument from their bench either and we face a penalty and we're 2-0 down so you know a really bizarre first goal an incorrect decision for this you know it's a second goal forgiveness on the incorrect decision referees make wrong calls just like just like we do you know so those things happen in football but the first goal is really bizarre and then um, it, 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 it provided real adversity for us to try and overcome and the fact that the players did come back from that and get a 2-2 draw in, in a really, really tough environment tonight, um, I, I think it just shows how much fight the players have got and I'm really, really proud of them to actually come back and get something out of that and um, keep fighting on, keep fighting for another week. And like I say, you keep fighting for another week, just about keeps us, keeps us alive and dude, that fight has got to continue, hasn't it? It's the only option now going into Saturday. It's the only option, yeah. Um, you know, as a, as a new group, w w with me um, at the helm, us as a, as a staff and, and players as a new group, we've had five games, we're unbeaten in four of them. Um, we took an amount of points that no one thought we would ever have got anywhere near already. Um, everyone thought this should be done and dusted uh, much earlier into my spell, and it's not. The players deserve credit for that. I think Ethan Ebanks Landell deserves a mention. Um, for the adversity he faced tonight in the stadium, it was hostile towards him at times. When he was, all he was trying to do was do his best for the team and do it the way we've been trying to plan, the way we've been trying to work. I thought the way he stuck to his task and kept doing it was really, really brave. When in some moments out there tonight, others weren't as brave as him. He was brave to keep getting on the ball when he may have done some things wrong. And he was he was facing some real heat for doing them things wrong, but then to pop up late on and score the equalising goal, I thought was a real testament to his character and the fight that he's still showing as our captain. And I know the rest of the team look to him because um, he shows that bravery. And I was really really happy for him that after the tough night he faced he went and got us that equaliser and I'm, I'm really glad that it was him. Just speaking about the, the support of the, the players from yourselves and how much you just encourage everyone just to try and get behind us for those 90 minutes on Saturday and just see where it, see where it takes us. Yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great game first and foremost. Um, local derby, it's going to be 
it's going to be rocking over there because obviously they're on the march. Their result aside tonight, I don't actually know how they've got on. Um, to, okay, um, but yeah, they're on the march towards um, a different target than what than what we're facing. But it's going to be a great atmosphere over there. Great game for the players, and we know the gravity of our situation. We know the implications of the day. Um, but we've just got to treat it as another game that's another test of how much we're willing to fight and I've had five games so far um, after a horrendous period before that and we're unbeaten in four of those and I think against Bradford we had a set piece an own goal and a hugely defect deflected um, goal that went in that was a really really even game it was never a 3-0 game whatsoever so all I can reflect on is the five games that I've had the fight that the players have shown in my five games, the commitment to try and do it our way in those five games. I'm really proud of them and I just want them to take that into the next game again. You've mentioned the frustration of the fans. I think the most important cry tonight was from a lot of people, uh, gear it up and get it forward. How would you explain your philosophy with the, the you know, it seems to go back a lot, square a lot. This is what they're thinking. Uh, what would your philosophy, how would you explain? I understand why you're not getting it forward quickly, but mm, mm. how would you explain to them why uh, why we play that way? That's an interesting one. I wouldn't say um, my philosophy at all is total football or total sideways or total backwards. I wouldn't no, say that I'm at not. all. Um, I would say we are more total options. Um, we try to provide the players with total options. There's them, them options are there to go in behind. Them options are there to, to pass direct, long to our, our targets favour up the pitch. But if another team covers those options up, when we, have, we don't really have big platform type players playing at the top end of the pitch, it doesn't seem logical for me to go up there if, if we're unlikely to keep the ball up there. Don't get me wrong, I understand that it attracts heat if we play a little bit shorter and we lose the ball shorter, that attracts more frustration, but um, I wouldn't say um, I'm total football and the players have to play short, have to play short, that, that's no, no. certainly far from the case. I want us to play in the most logical way and I want us to play whatever the opposition give us at any moment on the pitch and I would argue that we've had a, a positive record doing that so far.